she is now Mary in our living room. Uh, Mary oh, McDonough is here, you. fresh off the mountain. Right off uh, the mountain. You hear that music, what does that make you feel? It makes me cry and sad and happy and grateful and just feel really blessed. Yeah, that's an, every time we came on every week, I had all those feelings. I would yeah. cry. I don't know why. I was happy. I don't know. Why. It was but a happy it, show. It was. <laughs> what, uh, take us back to, I guess, day one. Uh, not yeah. day one of the show, but the day you were, uh, you auditioned. And yeah. Was it a short process? Well, the, the audition process was long because they brought in every kid, you know, in California. <laughs> you know, everyone was, I mean, I went on the audition and there were all these people I saw on TV all the time. It was a star-studded event for me as a kid. Yeah. And I had never been on an audition before. It was my very first audition. And then they pared it down, you know, more kids, more kids, and we went in and read the walnut cracking scene that is in the homecoming, the Christmas story. And then finally, they brought us all in and told us we were working with Patricia Neal. And I walked out and turned to Eric and said, does that mean we got the job? Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, my dad said it was like buying your first ticket to the Irish sweepstakes and winning. Well, I w wow. can only imagine. And then working with such a great cast for so many years, I would assume you became so close to all of all of them. Uh, we're still so close. We all are together all the time. We celebrate birthdays. And unfortunately, every once in a while, a, a death will lose someone. Yeah. And we had dinner at Michael Leonard's house a couple weeks ago. Mama. Mama. Oh, oh, mama. Look at mama had us all for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! But you know, yeah. you uh, you wrote uh, in your about in your book that you were bullied when you were younger. Yeah, okay. a little I, bit. And I was trying to you know think about this. I mean, here you are, sort of isolated for what 10, 11 years doing this show. Yeah. Did you? Where, where did you, that come yeah. from? Where well, it came from a couple places. One was I didn't fit into school, and I was only in school a few months a year. So sometimes it would happen at school, but it happened on the set. Actually, there was um, some someone's daughter was working on the show because we had the kids as extras in our schoolroom, and she told me that I didn't really get the part. It wasn't really mine, and they really wanted someone else because I had never acted before. I was brand new, and that the only reason I got to keep the part is because I looked like Earl Hamner's real life sister, and I was ten and oh. horrified. And I took it into my heart, and I thought, Oh no, oh no. There's, all the other kids know how to do this, and I don't, and there's something wrong with me. And it just fed into my sense of trying to be perfect, and, yeah. and I never told anybody. Well, you were also, you know, going through puberty at the time, mm -hmm. too, you know, 11, 12 years old. And what did that do to your self-esteem? Oh, it tanked. It completely, you know, rocked a sense of, already rocky sense of who I was. And I... I developed all kinds of insecurities and eventually developed into an eating issue and a food issue and body image issues. And Aaron was supposed to be the pretty one. And so I always felt this pressure to be pretty. And, and did you feel pretty? No, 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 no. To me, Aaron was the pretty one and so she was dumb. Mary Ellen was strong and the feisty one and Elizabeth was the cute little baby and Aaron entered all these beauty contests and lost all the time. <laughs> she, <laughs> yeah, yes. She never won one of those contests. So the, the message was pretty is bad. Pretty is not good. So so growing up, that did it last throughout? It, it obviously had a big influence on you because you are now a life coach. Yes. So th this was something that you went into because of this, because of what happened to you? Absolutely. Having grown up and worked working through all of these different issues, and don't get me wrong, growing up on the show was a great gift as well, but I just personalized them and, and tried to strive for perfection and tried to be pretty. And then through all the issues that I went through, um, it really informed who I became as a person, not only the stories from the show, but about helping people. So now, today, I'm a life coach, a certified life coach, and I work with people all the time on about on their goals and about their dreams and being fulfilled and having balance in their lives. And that, how does that differ from, say, a therapist that you would work with? What, it, the it's, fundamental difference. Yeah, the fundamental difference is we don't deal with the past as much. We, we address it, but we really focus in on, and it is very therapeutic, but it is not therapy. So we focus in on what you want. And I never tell my clients what they should do. You have all the answers and you're not broken, so the coach doesn't fix you. It just helps you find your answers. You have a coach like you would with somebody at the gym to work with on your life, on what matters to you. And we go forward. 
it's sort of a, like here we are now, yeah. let's move forward. How can we embrace where we are and yes, and move on? Where was the epiphany for you when you felt like you were stuck and before this sort of uh, epiphany, if you will, happen to you before you <laughs> move forward. There was a. Ah. Uh, I'm kind of referring. Uh, well, you. There was the hog photo. The the. Yeah. yeah, tell yeah. Me, the what tell photo? Us about that. Well, I journaled. Oh, so the hog photo. This yes. is a self-portrait that I drew oh, of my myself, goodness. and you can see I called her Hog Body. It's in my book, and she's crying. Those are my freckles. That's how I felt, and I think you also have the picture of what I actually looked like at the time, oh. that I drew this. It, do we have that we have picture? Do we have that picture? Can we bring that up? Well, yeah. May, it may be coming. Maybe. But anyway, so so it, I, well, that's how I felt, and I was about um, 13, uh -huh. and I actually was very, very thin. And oh, look how beautiful. That's what look you look that. like, and that's how you thought you saw Yeah, you, and that's how I saw yourself. myself. And I, and I always thought I was alone, but what I realized through my coaching and my workshops that I do, that I actually wasn't alone. I just kept it all secret and inside. So, so many women and men and boys now all feel the same sure. way, and I just didn't know it, but sharing it is part of the healing mm -hmm. and moving on. And journaling helped me. John Ritter started me journaling, and it saved my life. It's, res it's amazing how children, how resilient children can be, and yet how fragile. Oh, yeah. One person tells you on, a, oh, on the set that you're one not story, enough. Yeah. and it stays with you, and it shapes your life. You know, it does. Now you're shaping other people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I am. You. My dad always said, "Make good lemonade." Make good Do lemonade. Good lemonade. <laughs> yes, I love it. Make good Smart lemonade. Man. Smart yes, man. yes. He was. Mary's book. It's called Lessons from the Mountain. What I learned from Aaron Walton. Available wherever books are sold.